He's now Senator John Barrasso, a Republican from Wyoming who chairs the Committee on the Environment and Public Works. Been hearing you talk a lot about this, sir, and, and, and this price tag. It is a lofty one, and this is the nonpartisan Congressional Budget Office that did a study on this and came up with those numbers. $93 trillion, $600,000 per household. What do you think? Well, this uh, Green New Deal is a big green bomb that will blow a hole in our strong economy. Uh, it will destroy the energy independence we now have from foreign countries. It will destroy what we've been do doing to actually lower emissions. Uh, the cost to families, it, electricity alone would go up by about $3,600 per family per year. This is something, Sandra, that we cannot as a nation afford. The economy can't afford it. Our nation can't survive it. But let me tell you what Kamala Harris says back to that. Um, when talking about the Green New Deal, Medicare for all, and the costs involved in all this, she said it's not about a cost, but rather it's a return on investment. You say back to that what? <laughs> well, look, the reality of this is, and people around the country know this is a pipe dream that they're talking about, but the problem is all these presidential candidates have endorsed it. This is that hard left turn that the, that the Democrat candidates who are running for president have endorsed, they've signed on to. This is the direction they're going, which will take our economy off the cliff. Uh, we cannot as a nation afford it. American families aren't going to be able to do this. They want to eliminate, they're calling for the elimination of all oil, all coal, uh, all natural gas, eliminate all the combustion engines that burn gasoline in this country, do it within 10 years. We need more renewable energy. But right now, wind and solar is only 8% of what we have from a standpoint of energy in the United States for electricity. So the, the reality of this is that the emissions that they're trying to fight, the United States is only 13% of that. China and India alone are 33% of the global emissions. And, and that is not going to be solved well, it's interesting. by the Green New Deal. Even, even the, the co-authors of the study, uh, they, they commit to the, the plan doesn't come cheap. But even in their analysis, it's such a wide range of numbers that they give for the costs involved in this because the details of it are still pretty vague. I mean, the, the, the resolution sweeping jobs guarantee, you, you've heard a lot about that. They're estimating it would cost anywhere from $6.8 trillion to $45 trillion. I mean, that's a, that's a big range in costs that we're talking about here. And because of that, Nancy Pelosi, while she, sounds this, she, she speaks in favor of this, she's not committing to a vote on it. Here she is. The other side will say it's about a job loser. It isn't. It's about jobs, jobs, jobs. It's a health issue. Clean air, clean water. It is a defense issue. I salute, as I say, the enthusiasm, but I can't say we're going to take that and pass it. Maybe that's her remaining, you know, realistic about the prospects of something like this ever passing. We have a strong healthy, growing economy in this country today. You saw the new economic numbers out today. This is the first time in 13 years we've had for over the course of a year of 12 months, economic growth of over 3%. There are more people out there, there are more jobs available right now across the country than there are people available to fill those jobs. We have done through the tax cuts that the Republicans have passed and President Trump has signed and the regulatory relief that we brought for people, the kind of economic growth that people have hoped for in this country. Five million new jobs since President Trump took office, three million since tax reform has been signed. We're on the right path. This is an absolute mistake, this so-called Green Got New it. Deal. All right, Senator Brasso, before we let you go, the president sure. walked away um, uh, from the summit mm -hmm. with Kim Jong-un. Uh, no deal. Just want to end with your thoughts on that. What happens next? The president went in there prepared and focused. I think he's very clear-eyed, and on this, he did not blink. The president did absolutely the right thing to walk away. We need to eliminate nuclear weapons from the Korean Peninsula. The president knows that. The American people know it. You see what Kim wanted was the relief of sanctions. The, se the president said, no, we want something that is verifiable, enforceable. We don't have it at this point. This is going to be a long process, but I will tell you this. 
The world continues to be a dangerous place, but it is safer today with Donald Trump in the White House than it was the day that Barack Obama left the presidency. Well, Senator, uh, 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 the president walked away and said, really, that's what it came down to, the sanctions. So we'll see what happens next with all that. Senator Brasso, thank you for your time this morning, sir. Thanks, Sandra. All right. Well